So I was telling Lila this before the podcast, but I have literally had people meet, get into relationships and get married from my comment section, which is just the craziest thing. And I'm so grateful. And that means so much. Um, I've been invited to the weddings. I've, you know, been sent the invitations, which is so cool. I've been asked to be bridesmaid, which I would love to do at some point. But they're, you know, the most frequent question that I get is how do I meet something, somebody? And it comes from both men and women. It's how do I meet them? Where do I meet them? And I realized by, you know, going through those comments and talking with people and doing, you know, Q and A's and we'll often do like, ask Brett for advice and we'll talk about this. I realized, and then I thought about my own experiences, Gen Z doesn't know how to date because we, our entire lives are online. My first any experience of being asked out and flirting with a guy in high school getting into my first little like baby relationship situation ship when I was like 16 years old, it was all done online. It was through text, Instagram, Snapchat. And then when I went to college and I joined my sorority, it was like, how have you never been on Tinder? I'm like, I'm 17 years old. Like I haven't, like obviously I haven't been on Tinder, but everybody else was. And so then you make dating apps. My first and only real like long-term boyfriend that I had before meeting Alex, I met on Hinge. And that is a totally different world. But now you know, over the last few years, young people especially are getting, you know, more and more unhappy with dating apps. The algorithms are set up against you. The apps, just because they're a business, their goal is to keep you on the apps. Like Hinge's slogan, I think, is the dating app that's designed to be deleted. It's not. They literally, they'll like hide the, you know, the attractive users behind their paywall which is, and they've, you know, admitted to that, that you can kind of like see through the, like they give, like you'll be swiping and it's like, you can unlock this with one rose and it's like a really attractive person, but you, you have to pay to get it. And Tinder has, you know, these exclusive, you know, things that's like $500 that you can pay for in order to maybe meet somebody. So it's all, it's gamified as well because you just swipe and you swipe and you swipe. And men and women are on dating apps in different levels. There's significantly more men than there are women. Men and women swipe differently on apps. So it's literally, it's, there is very little success, especially now. So we have this entire generation that was raised in that world, that was raised in the digital world, is now leaving apps and has no idea what to do. Like genuinely does not know how to flirt, does not know how to approach a woman. And especially for men, you know, I have so much sympathy for them because number one, I mean, just asking a girl out and approaching is so terrifying. Just a regardless lot of, of the cultural, you know, tone, regardless of me too, like it was already very scary. And then add in me too and add in this divide between men and women where there's such hatred towards each other. Obviously, it's just going to be even worse. So literally do not even know how to, you know, approach it. So what I've been talking about, and I can tell your viewers, is that I think that the healthiest way to go about it is literally to create patterns and habits and like activities that you are doing on a weekly basis because it is so much easier to approach somebody. It's so much easier to get comfortable engaging with the opposite sex and maybe dipping your toe into flirting mm -hmm. if it is a comfortable environment for you. So like whether you're joining a run club and you go like every week and you're running with people, which Chris Williamson always says that run clubs are basically the new dating apps. Like it's basically just a dating event or pickleball or you join like a pottery class that you go to every single week or you go to, you find a really great Bible study and you're going every single week with the same group of people you get comfortable in that environment with that same group. And if there's somebody there that maybe you're interested in, you can start those conversations in a comfortable, like the stakes are so low because you're gonna see them next week. So you don't have to go, okay, I have to get everything set up. I need to go ask her out. And if it doesn't go well, she's gonna you know, cancel me online and I'm gonna be arrested. Like it's just the stakes are lower. And you can actually get comfortable engaging with you know, people of the opposite sex. Um, and so that's, sort of been what I've, you know, been suggesting. In a perfect world, I would love to be like hosting dating events and actually getting people, you Sounds know, real awesome. life. Um, but I have so mm -hmm. much, you know, sympathy for them. And I'm so grateful that I, you know, that I met Alex. And dating app? No, actually, we met at work. Just crazy, which I always said I would never do. I was like, I'm never, he, he also said it. It was like a whole thing that I was like, I can't do this, whatever. But you know, Daily Wire kind of did the easy part for me because Great. thank you, Daily Wire. Yeah, for exactly. That one. Because That's I huge. knew that it, where our values were That's aligned, um, and it was so you know simple. And he literally walked in, and like I looked at him, and I was like, "That's it!" Like, wow. That's what I'd never spoken with him before. How did he I ask you out? In the parking lot, and he literally just said, "I was love he to allowed for dinner." Was he allowed to do that? Or, I don't know. I mean, don't who know. knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, He's like, he wasn't my boss. So. No, yeah, he wasn't. Yeah. Um, but no, and it was it was very traditional and normal, and you know, not over text. 
Um, the other thing that I will tell women, um, and this is like apparently the sign that I gave Alex that it was like, okay, to ask me out was that, you know, women, you don't have to ask out. I mean, you don't have to make a first big move, but you do have to show that you're interested. And like, I hear from women and they're like, how do I get a guy to ask me out? It's like, maybe smile, like make look eye them contact. in the eyes. Yes. Like yeah. show that you were interested. And apparently like we were standing outside and it was cold. <laughs> I didn't have a sweater and we were standing out by my car and I was like shivering, but I made no motion to like move. I did not want to leave the conversation. He was like, you kept continuing the conversation, even though you were freezing cold and shivering. And he was like, and I knew that you actually wanted to be there and that you were interested. And he was like, that was the sign that you gave me. So just like your body language. And I think women are so closed off, but you do have to also take that first step. It's a dance, which again, I don't think Gen Z has been taught how to do. Um, so we I had, that's we had Alessandra Conti and then mm -hmm. Rachel Canto, a couple of different girls in the last few months on yeah. about dating and echoing a lot of what you're saying. And they're saying, let it be a little uncomfortable. Like you yeah. got to lean into it mm -hmm. almost like physically lean into it, yes. you know, or make the eye contact yeah. longer than you would feel naturally comfortable because yeah. we're all also so shy. Yes. I think we're so shy oh, yeah, and awkward. COVID made us yeah. awkward. I, I mean, same, it even made me awkward. I remember yeah. after I got back into like doing social things with my mm -hmm. husband again and like with other people, I was like, wait a minute, we're doing social things again after two years of like yeah. hunkering down. And we still did some social things during COVID, yeah. but there was a lot more activity happening. Yeah. And I think we've just gotten rusty. Yes. And if you if you didn't even have that because you just had COVID, that yeah. was your like youth, like yeah, part of exactly. your youth. And then you have the phone, you have yeah. digital life. It is so hard to interact. One of the things that they said I thought was really good too was it's not just like find someone you find attractive and then go flirt with them. Mm -hmm. It's like be open with people generally. Yes. Like have that, like when you're walking around public, make eye contact. Yeah. When you're talking to a clerk, like like ask, have the small talk, yeah. have small talk with them. Again, because it's, it's habits. It's, it's literally just learning yes. how to engage and be open to it and yes. knowing social cues. I think that COVID, you know, made us rusty. But again, just with my generation of being so online, we are not good with social mm -hmm. cues. And so I think that is, you know, what makes women a bit like testy about things. Like, is this guy being creepy or is he just interested? Like we genuinely, like guys don't know, women don't know. And I often say like for women, if a man is, you know, asking you out and leaning in, that's not really creepy. But to men, like I've been followed around Home Depot when I was single. With the guy being like, can I have your Snapchat? Can I have your Snapchat? And I've said no have twice. Your Snapchat. I'm like, that is creepy. And it's like, so we do need to know like what is appropriate, mm. but it goes for both men and women. And so, mm. yeah, it's practice. It's getting comfortable. It's being just open in general, um, which I think will be so important for people. But it breaks. I have so much sympathy for my generation because it's so, I feel like I, you know, won the lottery um, and feel so undeserving of it because I know how hard it is mm. for so many people my age.